Going from an addicted teenager to being set free through the prayers of her mother and friends, Sue Hamilton joins the call again, and she's the author of Carried by Faith, From Substance Abuse to a Life Filled with Miracles. Please be sure to stay to the end of this interview for a word of encouragement. Well, Sue, <laughs> your story is common among those who are addicted to drugs and alcohol. Why did you or people out there struggle with quitting addiction? You know, that's a hard question sometimes to answer. But for me personally, it was one of those things that I didn't feel loved. Now, I'm not saying that my parents didn't love me, but I didn't feel loved. I think I have a bigger tank and that's how some of us are. We have a bigger tank of that needs to be filled with love. Um, and then I just started turning to other people to try to get that filled. And in my case, I, I went from uh, not being uh, fulfilled in terms of that love to uh, just a girl that was looking for uh, other people to help me fill it. And then I wanted to do what they were doing. And whenever I did what they did, then I was in trouble. And I hung out with a lot of people that were a lot older than me. So then I got stuck sucked in i should say mm -hmm. to the um what they were doing and they were doing drinking and drugging that's what was happening did you how did you change can they can a addicted person change well yeah but it takes quite a while and you know the i always say right now the the drugs that are here right now oh my goodness if I had been involved in those types of drugs. It is more and more challenging. It really, really is. But anybody can change it. It comes from that desire that I don't want to live like I'm living anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the biggest desire is, and I ask that to people that I get to work with is, how do you want to live? And, mm -hmm. and it can be just, how do you want to live today? Yeah. How do you want to live today? And so it always comes back to that person. Do they have the desire in their heart? Um, I've worked with many people um, to say, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to change right yet, or I'm not ready. Well, then they're not ready. And yeah. I tell that with family members. It's like, then they're not ready. And that's yeah. the hardest thing to swallow. Yeah. And you know, I get involved with a lot of different people on addictive levels, moms, teachers, all kinds of people that are like, how do we help these people? And again, I'm a robot and uh, repeating myself, it's like, you got to ask them what they want first. When they want help, a lot of times what I do is a basic thing of the salvation message. You know, do you believe? That's the first thing. But after that, I really talk about setting up good habits and you know things that we do every day and those i have you know established some of that as a speaker and an author i have a course that i go through about anchoring your day in god and you know who am i in god so there's a lot of different layers of steps but the very baby steps are is just you know waking up every day thanking god that i'm alive after you've came to believe um, giving him five minutes of your time and then, you know, armoring yourself up to go out and face the world. There was some miracles that happened to you in your life. And I would love to know, and the audience would love to know about your miracle motorcycle. Yeah, that was an interesting story. Uh, and I always tie it in to this is what happened during that time that I was pull, uh, had the cotton in my ears and starting to go, well, maybe there is a God. Uh, God really got my attention. And um, it was on a in a motorcycle accident. And the real brief story of it is, is that uh, I was on my motorcycle. I did not have a helmet on or a jacket. And I was the first motorcycle behind an R. RV where the uh, engine and, uh, and blew up and oil and antifreeze went all over the interstate. My motorcycle was out of control. And uh, anyway, I uh, don't want to give it all away, but I drove away from that accident totally unharmed. Um, so it is a total unbelievable story that has made one of the most impactful things 
in my life to believe that there is a real true God that has a purpose for me. That's what a great story. And yes, you do have to read the book. How would people find out more about you? Yeah, um, the best way to find out about me is to go to my website. And my website is suelhamilton.com. And I have all kinds of resources and you can find out about the Carried by Faith motorcycle story. It's available on book, audio book. You know, there's all kinds of sources and, and that we resources we have. So um, I'd love to connect with people. I do that on Facebook and YouTube. So there's all kinds of ways that you can find out about me and all my resources. Wonderful. And what would you like to leave my audience with today? I always like to leave people with hope. I'm an encourager at heart. And there is always a way out from the way that we have been living. And it doesn't have to always be in addiction. It can be in what we're trapped in, in our own minds. I can be there some days, right? And so to me, it's like, what, how do we want to live today? I want to live a life of hope, of joy, of love, of peace, of contentment. And it's like, we need to do that with each other, with community. And my love is women to walk alongside them and let them know that they can develop their own personal relationship with God and that he can be your very best friend and he will carry you through this journey to get to the end. Because isn't that what we're all waiting for? We want to get to the end, but we want to enjoy the journey. <laughs> Thank you for watching the call. We hope you learned more about Jesus through this video. You know, the Lord cares for you and can heal you. And when you hand your life over to Jesus, he can transform it. He makes you a new creation in Christ Jesus. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved for you are the one I praise. And... In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Are you seeking the heart of God or are you seeking the things of the world that do not keep you filled? Do you listen to the call of God? Because God speaks to you every day. Are you listening to the call? What sound is the